So these are some of the causes of presenteeism. So people who come to work are not working effectively because they're somehow incap incapacitated. So unhealthy lifestyle and diet, too much alcohol, not enough exercise. Um, I think we all can, uh, we all know about some of these at different times. Um, and sometimes we use some of these as sort of cruxes when things are more stressful in the workplace, we drink too much and have a, a poor diet. Um, ill work is going to work. Um, allergies and asthma seem to be a big, big part of uh, work presenteeism. Um, and then people with very poor management skills or poor work-life balance. Um, and part of that is the idea of work stress. Um, so people who are not able to manage their emotions effectively, who are experiencing negative emotions on a chronic basis. So negative emotions, something we studied a, a lot, negative emotions are very um, important for us. They tell us when there is problems going on, there is dangers in our environment, problems in our workplace. But when we experience negative emotions chronically, all the time, every day, for extended periods of time, this is very damaging to our, to our biology, to our mental health, and we get things like high work stress and high burnout. So need to develop interventions that maybe can, can ameliorate this. Um, in terms of the cost of presenteeism, well, uh, Medibank has recently uh, suggested that um, the cost is about $34 billion uh, to our country, uh, decrease in GDP by around nearly 3%. These are huge things. And about six working days are lost per employee because of people who come to work who are not functioning at their theoretical best. So that's a really big, these are big figures. Um, and if you want to put numbers towards these things, which um, you find out when you write grants, the NHMRC and so on really love these figures. Um, something like uh, stress-related presenteeism. So people who are, turn up to work who are highly stressed and do not, be, as a consequence, work effectively something like $9.6 billion to the economy, uh, $6 billion to the employers, um, and uh, two days lost per, per year. Um, and of course, many of you know will know the effects of people who make stress-related workers' compensation claims. Um, they're, I think they're the number one costly uh, claim in terms of uh, uh, medical claims. Um, they're not the most common, but they are the most expensive, and people have stress-related burnout. So, um, and then there's there's more when people uh, go and leave because of st stress. So there are many causes of workplace stress. I'll just go through these quickly. There are physical causes, work factors, environment, bullying, autonomy, and we should be doing things about this. We can easily do things about this, and that's probably the easiest thing. But there is also um, an individual aspect: the experience of stress. So a person's ability to resi resist occupational stress varies incredibly from person to person. The same stressor for me is not the same stressor for Claire or for, for somebody else. Um, and to some extent, our physiology affects how we interpret these things. Our mental state, our cognition, our thoughts all affect our ability to manage and understand stress. We can change the workplace, these, the, those other variables, but we need to also help individuals better manage their emotions and cope with um, their situation at work, psychologically and, and biologically, and that's what we're doing with some of our studies. Um, so, uh, occupational stress, this is just stress, this is the classic definition. It's really when the perceived demands and the perceived ability to cope with these demands are not the same. When there's an imbalance between what I believe the demands that for me, in terms of for me to do my job, and my ability, my resources to do it. So sometimes that is a, an actual thing. You can, you can measure why well, I don't have the ability to do it. But it also, also could be um, my perception of the situation as well. So stress is a personal experience. No two people will experience the same reaction to the same workplace environment. So changing the environment may help some people in terms of occupational stress, but cannot be the only solution for <coughs> occupational stress. You really have to help the way in which people think and manage their day-to-day -day interactions with people. This has been a Swinburne production.